all this is dr mobeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more discussion one more show for the covid 19 discussions today's discussion is going to be the most important one not because we'll talk about the ade today or antibody dependent enhancement and its possibility with the sars cov 2 i welcome everyone first of all this is drbeen.com this is an article i have the link to this article in the description it is interesting article november 2020 so rather recent and it says antibody dependent enhancement of corona viruses and they have done a thorough job over here i'm going to go over this with you through my own illustrations but at the end of the discussion i want to discuss ivermectin's role in the light of this information so let's look at it there are two points to grasp today one is what is ade and what are the chances of antibody dependent enhancement that is one the second part of the discussion is does ivermectin have a role here to prevent this and so then preventing the cytokine storm and is there any other drug that is probably as powerful as ivermectin there is none so this is these are the two primary points that i want to convey we have been talking about the virus and the body's behavior for a long time we know that when we have a cell and that cell is bound with sars-cov-2 and here this receptor's name is as2 correct then what would happen is the cell will become a target a victim of the virus and then the cell would present that virus as well in this try some of the cells are going to present the antigens of the virus on their surfaces so when they would present those immune cells or normal cells then the immune system will become activated first the innate arm and then the adaptive arm an adaptive arm may take anywhere from 7 days to 30 days depending upon the viral load and the body's response once the antibodies are produced then the virus gets coated further virus and because these coats of the antibody prevent the virus from binding with the receptors virus cannot bind with the receptor macrophages and neutrophils would just keep picking them up and killing them and that is how our body would get rid of the virus now let's look at what are various methods or mechanisms of ade so here is an antibody an antibody is usually made up of two kinds of proteins heavy chains and light chains light chains these orange things here are light chains and these blue things here or the proteins here are heavy chains one part of the heavy chain and light chain together at the end of the antibody they make variable region where the antibody binds with some pathogen some antigen and then there is another part here this part which does not do any binding but once the virus is captured on the binding area that is here now this constant part this is called constant part because it does not change can actually perform many biological functions including complement activation and binding to other cells number 1 there is a variable region where where the antigen would be bound then there is a constant region whose job is to for example do complement activation or to bind with other cells from this part of the constant region looking at various mechanism of antibody dependent enhancement so imagine this is a virus and don't think about this as a sars cov 2 or corona virus some virus that virus was introduced in our body or a vaccine was introduced that virus got introduced in our body and we made antibodies against it now when the virus arrives in our body again and we have a lot of antibodies against that then what happens is that the antibodies bind with the virus this part here is the variable region bound to the virus then this part here is the constant region that is bound to the fraction constant receptor here we have various cells that have that have receptors that can allow an antibody to land on them and stand there and when the antibody stands there these cells can actually take this whole complex of antigen and antibody that is virus and antibody they can eat them up they can phagocyte phagocytose them they can internalize them the next step is that the cell would bring it in and then digest and kill it and chop it and destroy it but in some cases it may be possible that the virus when it enters this complex when it enters inside the cell now the virus has a new route to enter inside the cell virus uses its own receptors but now it can actually just bind to an antibody and then use antibody's receptor to go into the cell and then if it can escape 
the digestive mechanisms, then it can cause infection in the cell. This is what is called antibody dependent enhancement. This me method is observed in West Nile virus. It is observed a lot in dengue virus and HIV. The cells that have the FC receptors on them most commonly are the immune cells, especially macrophages. So what happens is, imagine a macrophage is a policeman, it's a cop. We have an antibody who has arrested a virus. When the macrophage would reach there, it would hold the antibody and the virus, eat them up and destroy them. This one mechanism I would request you to keep in mind because I'm going to use this at the end and connect it with ivermectin and discuss it further. Method number two, ADE, antibody dependent enhancement mechanism number two. This mechanism is complement dependent. If this is one antibody, on one end, the variable end, the antibody can bind with the antigen. On the constant part, it can actually bind with carbohydrates and it can bind with complements. It can bind with other antibodies as well. So there are many biological functions that can happen here. What is more important for us to know right now is the complement binding. Here in this diagram, this piece here is the complement. Complement is nothing but these are proteins. They cause inflammation or they take part in inflammation, number one. Number two, they take part in destruction of the pathogen and destruction of the sick cells. That protein has C1R with it and C1S with it, parts of the protein. Once this complex binds with the antibodies, which are bound to a pathogen, then this complex would cause activation of C3. I also call it the sweet tooth for macrophages. So C3B, or it's a protein which is broken up. The C3B binds with the pathogen, and on the other side, it has receptors on the immune cells and it binds with them. So that would mean pathogen has one more mechanism, one more way to bind with a cell. And now it is binding through the C3B because there is this antibody present here that has helped to activate C1Q complex, which then resulted in C3 complex activation. Complement itself can now act as a receptor for the virus, just like antibody acted as a receptor. And now this virus can be internalized with the complement's help, and once again can cause infection of the cell. What viruses have known to do this? West Nile and HIV. These viruses have known to use, to cause enhanced infectivity using complement pathways. Third mechanism, that is C1Q pathway, which is also a complement. This is the same C1Q that we saw here. This same C1Q has one more way of improving the enhancement and that or entry of the virus. And that is that C1Q itself has a receptor on some cell. So when the antibodies are present, on one end, they bind with the antigen, that is the virus. On the other end, the C1Q can bind with the cells and then this whole complex is internalized and it can cause infection. C1Q receptor is present on, look at this, monocyte and macrophages, these are innate arm cells, neutrophils, innate arm cell, B cells, adaptive arm cell, fibroblasts, just tissue cells, smooth muscle cells, I just talked about it, some of our muscles are out of our control they just work by themselves and endothelial cells which are blood vessel surface cell internal surface cell. here again antibody is the culprit antibody's presence has activated c1q complement and then this complex becomes attached to the receptors on these cells monocyte macrophages and so on and then this whole complex is internalized normally these this complex is digested and destroyed, but there is a chance that the virus can escape this and then cause infection of the cell. Fourth mechanism. What happens is, imagine here is the virus. We have an antibody present here against this virus. What this antibody is doing here is that once it connects with the protein on the virus, the, the binding area of the virus, it would then have the virus and the complex attached to the FCR, just like the very initial concept we saw in the method one. The antibody route becomes more prevalent for the virus entry than the receptor route of the virus. If we use SARS-CoV-2 as an example, we'll say that SARS-CoV-2, instead of using ACE2, will now use more antibody FC receptors. Once that virus has gone in, it would replicate. And now if more viruses are going in because they have this extra route, then more replication would occur. What would happen is as the replication in increases, I would like you to note this mechanism as well. The virus would start 
sending its cargo virus would start sending it its messengers its cargo inside our nucleus and ask our dna not to defend itself by not releasing interferons by not releasing tumor necrosis factors not only cell is infected it is not able to defend itself and it is not able to tell the surrounding cells that hey guys wake up there is a virus it's soon going to come towards you as well so have your defenses ready if the virus enters through its own receptor for example ace2 it has lesser chance of producing such cargo although sars-cov-2 does produce it and what kind of viruses behave this way ross river virus dengue virus the result of this mechanism is that antiviral genes of our cells are not working correctly and we know sars-cov-2 does that fifth mechanism so first let's look at the concept of conformational change conformational change in our body's proteins means a change in the shape or electromagnetic forces of a protein when another protein is connected with it. Our proteins have a habit of having conformational change. When a channel opens, for example, zinc channel we have been talking about, when a channel opens, what is that? It is a protein. How does it open up? That is a conformational change. It opens up. So same thing over here. When the virus is present, an antibody against that virus is present, sometimes antibody actually acts as a conformational change for the receptor of the virus and it makes it even more optimized to bind with the cell antibody acts like a little magnet for the receptor and changes the shape of the receptor to make it a little bit better optimized better optimized antigen of the virus binds better with its receptor on the cell and enters better now let's look at and what kind of viruses HIV virus has this mechanism. Antibody dependent enhancement in coronaviruses. That means so many types of coronaviruses in the animals, in humans, in SARS-CoV-2's case, and MERS-CoV and so on. We have observed antibody dependent enhancement in the coronavirus for the cats. So not applicable to humans, but it is observed in cats coronavirus. We have checked SARS-CoV-1 we're not talking about two, one. And we have seen that SARS-CoV-1 can cause increased entry into macrophage based on the method one of the ADE. So SARS-CoV-1 has been observed, not in humans, but in animals, has been observed that when there is a vaccine against SARS-CoV-1 and that vaccine actually protects the animal from severe disease, at the same time, there is a little more lung damage. And they became very surprised at why is the lung being damaged when the vaccine is actually protective? And it turned out that the vaccine was helping the virus enter macrophages more easy. Then MERS-CoV, Middle East Respiratory Virus. There is an antibody called MERS-MAB1, just like Lironlimab and so on. MERS-MAB1. It is observed that MERS-MAB1 can cause conformational change in the spike of the MERS-CoV and enhances its entry into the cells. So again, there is no SARS-CoV-2. We are talking about SARS-CoV-1 and MERS-CoV and other coronaviruses. Then SARS-CoV-1 is known to have increased entry by using FC gamma, which is IgG based receptors, which cells monocyte and lymphocytes, which normally do not get infected by SARS-CoV-1. And they normally do not have ACE2 receptors on them. However, they still get infected because the virus enters them through the FC heart receptor of the antibody. So it uses antibody to get into the cells. Otherwise, monocyte and lymphocyte should not be infected by the SARS-CoV-1 because they don't have ACE2 receptors or the quantity is really low on them. But they still get infected because the SARS-CoV-1 enters them through the ADE. Then in 2018, there was a study done to try to produce ADE for SARS-CoV-1 in primates, in monkeys. They were trying to see, is this going to happen in humans as well? And they were not able to produce it. They tried to do it with the rhesus monkeys and they failed. So if they failed on monkeys, hopefully they would, it would not work on humans as well. One more interesting thing. In 2019, they did one more study on SARS-CoV, again, not SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV. Vaccine increased the antibodies, which are neutralizing antibodies. These are those antibodies that are going to be against the spike protein, and they would not allow, they will bind with the spike and would not allow the virus to bind with the receptors of ACE2. 
And so the, the virus is neutralized. That is what Moderna's vaccine is. That is what Pfizer is. That is what AstraZeneca is and so on. Now, when they administered the vaccine and there was increased neutralizing antibodies that reduced the viral load. So this is a study they're doing. Viral load is reduced, but the lung injury is increased. Start thinking that why the heck is this happening? There are two kinds of macrophages. Macrophages are part of the innate arm. We've discussed that in a lot of detail. There are two kinds of macrophages, M1 type and M2 type. M1 macrophages, when they are excited, they cause inflammation. They release cytokines that will cause inflammation. M2 macrophages, on the other hand, when they are active and they are excited, they release cytokines that reduce inflammation. They found out that for the SARS-CoV-1, when the vaccine-dependent enhancement was produced artificially, they saw that M1 macrophages became more active and M2 became less active, which means macrophage activation syndrome occurred. What would happen is in a patient, again, that patient has to have some genetic predisposition that his immune system is, is responding more through the humeral arm, that is B cells, is producing a lot of antibodies. Those antibodies are then allowing the virus, let's say SARS-CoV-2. So now this is my hypothesis. That is allowing the SARS-CoV-2 to enter more and stimulate M1. That M1 stimulation is pro-inflammatory. That is macrophage activation syndrome. That is what causes the cytokine storm. So now let's combine the two participate in ADE. So vaccines in one way are actually better than the wild type infection. And that is that vaccines are making neutralizing antibodies. While the wild type infection in some people, in all of us, will make neutralizing and non-neutralizing. And in some people that non-neutralizing is causing ADE for macrophages, which is causing macrophage activation syndrome. And no, nobody has paid me to sing songs of the vaccine. Secondly, please, this is only for educational purposes. This is not a prescription for anyone. This is just, we are exploring this together and we are educating ourselves. Animal studies in SARS-CoV-2 have actually shown that when and neutralizing antibodies are present, then the ADE just are reduced. So slow clap that vaccines would actually help. Again, I know that anti-vaxxers are going to start roasting me here and say, well, it's not going to help you or this and you're that. Fine. No vaccine if you don't want it, at least ivermectin. Ivermectin from the day one or even in the prophylaxis. And then steroids, maybe seven to 10th day. That is a solution. That is the only solution. So now let's continue. So how do we ensure that AD, ADE does not occur? Number one, keep vaccine neutralizing antibody vaccine dose high. If the vaccine is, for example, inactivated virus, then it is going to make the non-neutralizing antibodies as well that can cause ADE. Number two, change the antibody target from spike protein. So maybe do not target the spike protein, target something else. I'm not very much sold on this one. Administer protease and FC inhibitors. What are proteases? Remember, TMPRSS2 blockers, which is bromhexin type things. Give bromhexin with the vaccine and that would actually reduce ADE. Don't promote the helper 2 pathway. So that means don't give too much adjuvants that are going to trigger the T helper 2. This is why the vaccine Johnson and Johnson vaccine, they're so proudly bragging that, hey, we go T helper 1 path, which is a good thing.